Well, a blessed Monday morning, dear saints. Thanks for joining us again this morning. Today we are at Monday, September 27th, the last week of the month of September. Our psalm for today, 91, and we are beginning a new book, just a little time in the book of Malachi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hear the word of the Lord from the psalmist this morning. Because you have made the Lord your most high, your dwelling place, the most high who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. You might recognize that psalm that's uh, also referenced when Jesus is being tempted by the evil one. And the evil one throws this back in Jesus' face. And Jesus, again, brings him back to the true word of God. But did you hear the promises in here? This last part of this psalm right here for today is just full of promises. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him, I will protect him, I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. All promises to God's redeemed. All promises that we're going to see uh, in the book of Malachi as we begin. This is Malachi chapter 3. And Malachi, remember the last book of the Old Testament, written about 400 years before Christ. But as Malachi is written, there are no other prophets now that will speak. God's people, again, weren't listening, weren't, weren't uh, willing to listen to God's direction, so God stopped speaking. And there was 400 years that was quiet. Malachi, the last Old Testament prophet, and he makes reference to someone here, uh, Elijah, an Old Testament prophet. He makes a reference here that will be fulfilled in the last Old Testament prophet and the first Old Testament prophet, which is John the Baptist, right before Christ. For I, the Lord God, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. For the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and contributions. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there might be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine and in your field, and it shall, and it shall not fall bare, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord, but you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is in vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before, of, before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I may make up my treasured possessions, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, 
when all of the arrogant and all of the evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze as the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and the rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Well, Malachi continues to point God's people back to what they are supposed to be doing. And the part of this uh, text that stands out for us today is Malachi is challenging them to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. You see, at this point, Israel has forgotten and got, forgotten God again. And they are not bringing the tithes into the storehouse. Now, an Old Testament tithe was 10%. And they're not doing that. And God's question, will you rob God? Yet you rob me by not bringing to God what is God's. Now, remember, God doesn't need your money. God doesn't uh, need to pay his mortgage in heaven by the money that you give. But God does use the money that comes into his church to continue the spreading of the gospel. So when you give your tithes and offerings, a part of it goes to keep the church going. A part of it goes to missions. A part of it goes to international missions. A part of it goes to pay my salary. When God asks us to continue to give back portions of what he has so blessed us with, It's not because he can't deal without them, but he uses this as a way of teaching us again to trust in him. He makes a promise in here. He says, test me in this and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and give you even more than you can imagine. When I was in seminary, there was a church about 30 miles from us in that church. The pastor there, he talked to every new member about stewardship. And when he talked to them, He said this, he said, when you become a member here, we expect that you will tithe. We expect that you will give a portion of your income to support the work of the ministry here. And he says, I'll make a deal with you in this, because some people didn't want to tithe. He would say to them, you give, you keep track of your giving for a year. And at the end of the year, If you feel that you have been shorted, that God has not blessed you, that God has not abundantly given you more than you've given to him, the church will write you a check right there for what you have given. You see, he took it seriously. He took this promise of God and he knew that God would continue to bless those who give their tithes and their offerings. God doesn't, this isn't an either or, you give this and then God will do that. It comes first of all from a joyful heart. It comes from a heart that trusts in God and looks at all the blessings he's given me and wants to give back knowing that God will bless, use this money as a blessing and then continue to bless the giver so that their life is a life of abundance. Now that doesn't mean riches, that doesn't mean everything that we would look at and say, wow, how blessed they are. It means we have a life of peace, a life of repentance that recognizes that Jesus has already forgiven all of our sins, a life that recognizes the talents he's given, maybe in your vocation, maybe in your income, maybe in different things that you have, talents you use in church, And a person who recognizes how to use those and how to give those back to God to bless him. That's all in this tithe and offering that we talk about. Tithing in the New Testament is not a law. There is nothing that says you have to tithe. But Jesus does say that when we give, we should give with a joyful heart. And that means we recognize God's gifts to us. Life and health and daily bread. 
daily bread for the food and everything we need to sustain this body and life as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. We recognize that God has abundantly given us gifts. He's called us into his kingdom. He's forgiven our sins through Jesus' death and resurrection. He sustains us each and every day and has the promise of eternal life waiting for us. That's a joyful heart that recognizes those things and a joyful heart that gives back to God what he's given to us. There's one more image late in the, uh, in the reading for today. It's, a, it's an agricultural image. I hope you've seen it. What does the joyful Christian look like? Well, he uses the example here of a calf that comes out of the stall for the first time. I use the example of in spring after we'd been milking cows all winter long and they're all penned up in the barnyard. That first spring day after everything is dried out and the pasture grass is tall and you open the gate and the cows head out to the pasture for the first time, they kick and buck and they're free and the grass is tall and the mud is gone and they're completely joyful. That's an image of what it looks like to live in Christ. That's the image of what Malachi says when he says, when God says, test me in this and see if I will not throw open the gates of heaven and bless you abundantly more. This is the Old Testament reading, the word for today. Amen. Our catechetical review for today in the Lord's Prayer brings us to the third petition. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean? The good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may be done among us also. How is God's will done? God's will is done when he breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, which do not want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when, and when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. Dear saints, his good and gracious will is done every day when you turn in and hear and listen to these devotions, strengthening us so that we might depend on him and his promises. We pray. Father, we thank you for the graciousness that you deal with us. We thank you for the gifts that you give to us and pray that you would continue to bless us with these things. Help us, Father, to recognize all of your gifts and with a joyful heart to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with so that your kingdom may come, so others may hear and grow in the knowledge of sins forgiven through Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection for all mankind. Hear us, Lord, as we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in, dear saints. Join us again tomorrow.